In the previous lesson, we learned how to create rectangular arrays. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to create polar arrays. In the first example, there is a round table and a chair. Imagine I wish to distribute eight chairs around the table. To do this easily, I'm going to use the polar array command. The polar array can be found either in the modify menu or in the modify panel of the home ribbon. Once the tool is active, I have to select the objects I want to distribute, so I will select the chair and press Enter. Then, I need to specify the center point of the array, which will be the center of the table. As soon as I clicked on the table center, a preview of the polar array with six chairs appeared. In addition, as happens with every type of array, the array creation ribbon with all the necessary settings of the array appeared too. In the Items panel, I can specify the number of chairs in each row and either the angle between them or the total angle the chairs will fill. I will change the value in the Items field to 8 and the angle fields will update automatically. Since I wish the chairs to cover the entire perimeter of the table, I won't change any of those values. In the Rows and Levels panels, I will also not change anything because in this example, I do not intend to create multiple rows or levels. In the end of this contextual ribbon, there is the Properties panel. The associative button defines if all the chairs that are included in the array will be treated as one object, and we will be able to continue editing them as an array in the future. In this example, I will not enable the associative option. The Base Point button redefines the base point of the array and it works the same way it did in the rectangular array. Next, there is the Rotate Items button, which controls if the items will be rotated as they are arrayed. Notice that once I deactivate this option, the direction of the copies changes according to the direction of the original object. Since this is not what I want, I will enable the Rotate Items option again. As for the Direction button, it controls whether the direction of the array will be clockwise or counterclockwise, and we will understand how it works better in the next example. So at the moment, I have finished editing the array, and I am ready to click on the Close Array button to create it. Notice that eight independent chairs have been distributed evenly around the table. Moving on to the next example, we see a hemispherical stage with a grand piano and a single chair. As you may have imagined, I wish to distribute 50 chairs around the stage, so at first I am going to select the Polar Array tool. Then I will select the objects I want to distribute and press Enter. Next, I will click on the center of the hemisphere to specify the center point of the array. As soon as I defined the center, a preview of the polar array with six chairs appeared. However, I don't want the chairs to cover 360 decimal degrees, so I will change the value in the fill field to 165. As you can see, the direction of the array is wrong. To change this, I will deactivate the direction button. Notice that the chairs are now placed right. At this point, I will increase the number of chairs to 12 and the number of rows to 5. I will set the distance between the rows to 1 and reactivate the associative button. Finally, I will close the array. Now, if I need to change it again, I just need to select it so the contextual ribbon reappears.